Hello engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Uday and I am a software engineer. This is the first video in the series of data structures and algorithms and in this video we are going to start with the introduction. So without any further delay, let's get started. I'll share my whiteboard. So in this quick introductory video, we will uh, talk about what is a programming language we will try to understand what is data structures and algorithms and we will see what is the best language to learn data structures and algorithms okay so let's start with the first question what is programming language so when we talk uh, to humans let's say there are two humans a and B let's say this is both of us and uh, we are able to communicate with each other using English so when I say some things in English you are able to understand and when you say some things in English I am able to understand and we are able to communicate so the mode of communication here is English okay so I and this is not the only language, right? We humans have so many languages Hindi, Urdu, Marathi, um, Spanish, Russian, right? There are so many languages. And um, they all have different rules of communication. And when we follow those rules, we are able to communicate with each other. But in the programming world, there are humans on one side. And then there's a computer on the other side. Now humans can speak, let's say human language, but computers can only speak binary. It's always ones and zeros, one zero, one zero, blah, blah, blah. Binary system cannot understand human language, human language cannot understand binary. So how do we communicate with a computer so that we are able to tell the computer what it's supposed to do and uh, how, we can per how it can perform actions, right? So we need um, a common language um, uh, to help each other out okay so that's where the programming languages come in so programming languages uh, act as um, you can say a translator so programming language is a translator between human and machine code you can say machine language how does this work so when we write something in a programming language let's say uh, I'm writing something in C++ and when I run this program it gets translated to machine code so there is somebody called a compiler in between compiler is a feature of C++ and what this compiler does it translates our so-called um, uh, code or program or script into machine code machine code is nothing but ones and zeros binary okay so when we write our code we use what do we use we use all the alphabets and characters that are available in our uh, keyboard right we use all these characters and each character has some meaning in the um, in in the context of the language being used and uh, those get converted to ones and zeros using the compiler and uh, when when the computer reads these ones and zeros it knows what it's supposed to do so it does those respective uh, commands and gets back to us okay so that's why we need a programming language in order to communicate with a machine so in order to facilitate communication between humans and machines it's kind of an intermediary intermediary between us okay that's why we need a programming language what is data structures and algorithms DSA so let's break it down DSA is data structures and algorithms let's talk about the first word data 
Now, in, in a computer, there are always limited resources available. So, let's say we have a bunch of hardware. First is RAM, and then we have the processor, which is CPU, and then we have the hard disk drive. Now, in any computer, these are limited resources, right? Let's say in my computer, there is uh, there is 500 GB of hard disk space available. So this is permanent storage. Permanent. Or you can say persistent. What does this mean? It means that when you restart the computer, the data is not lost. The data is available. Unless you delete it, the data is there, permanently fixed in the hard disk. But RAM is random access memory. This is temporary. Temporary. Which means it is used for uh, temporary purposes. Uh, so when you restart the computer, the RAM is flushed out. So there is nothing in the RAM. So only uh, temporary stuff is stored here. And then there is CPU. CPU is the processor which is responsible for performing some actions. Let's say you're doing some addition, subtraction. So the CPU does all this. And we are launching a program. Let's say we are running this one note application. And when I'm drawing something, it is you're able to see it, right? All this is the work of CPU. Okay. Now, when we talk about data in in the world of data structures and algorithms, we are mainly referring to this temporary data. So when we run our programs, right, we mainly put stuff into the RAM and we take out stuff from the RAM. We, so we, we put data into it and we take out data into it as per the needs of our program. So because we are putting stuff into this RAM and because this RAM is only limited, it becomes our responsibility as engineers to ensure that we are utilizing this space very efficiently. Otherwise, we will overflow the RAM and computer crashes, basically. So it becomes very essential to write programs in such a way that RAM is used very efficiently. Also CPU. Because CPU is doing all the operations, we need to, you know, um, I wouldn't say minimize the operations, but we need to do it efficiently. Efficient operations. So, so for example, if something can be done in um, 100 operations, you sh your program should not take 1000 operations to do, to, to do the same amount of work, to get the same output. Let's say you're doing a search. If you're doing a search on an array, and array is sorted. So in an unsorted array, if this is taking five steps to do a search operation, in, an, in a sorted array, it takes less than five. So we will always choose a sorted array over unsorted array for doing uh, search operations because it is efficient and takes less number of operations. So this was just an example. If you don't know what is an array, what is the sorted list, unsorted list and all that, don't worry about it. We'll look at all of those in the future videos. But all you need to know is in data structures and algorithms, we are talking about uh, what data should go into the RAM and in what structure. So there are many structures available um, to store data into the RAM. We have arrays, we have linked lists, we have trees, graphs and what have you. And we are not just storing data in it, right? We want to do operations on them so that we, we are trying to solve some problem. And those operations are nothing but a sequence of steps. So when we say sequence of steps, you can assume that it is an algorithm. So what is an algorithm? It is nothing but a sequence of steps to solve a use case or you can say a problem or a question whatever okay so algorithm is a sequence of steps to perform operations on the structured data okay so that is what is data structures and algorithms so why is it so important to study all this so as engineers, right, we write applications. Many modern day applications, uh, they are built for scalability. 
which means that if the program is running well for 100 users it should run in the same way for 1000 users it should run the same way for 10,000 users, 1 lakh users, 10 lakh users, 100 lakh users okay that is what is scalability so let's say it is working well for 100 users but it is failing for 1000 users then it means that there is some form of inefficiency in the code and if we don't understand how the algorithms are working internally then that code you know is not scalable so when we learn data structures and algorithms it gives us an opportunity to compare to compare uh, different algorithms so in, a, in any programming language uh, when we are trying to solve a question there is not only one answer there, the, each question can be solved in different answers let's say a so question has three different ways to solve how do we know which is better so we compare we compare in terms of space in terms of time we compare in these two parameters and choose which is having the least amount of space which is taking the least amount of time and then we declare it as the winner we will study about all these in this uh, series we will learn about how to how to compare different codes and how to pick the winner so that's why we need to study data structures and algorithms because it makes us better engineer so the third question is in which language should we learn DSA right so we have we have understood what is dsa in a brief sense now let's study about um, how to pick a programming language to study this so there are many languages there is c there is c plus plus there is python there is java there is uh, javascript there's php and there are many languages that keep on coming okay but I would say as beginners or even as experienced programmers we should choose C++ as a best language to learn DSA why because C++ supports dynamic memory allocation what is it dynamic memory allocation what is dynamic memory allocation so this thing is a feature set of C++ that gives us the power as engineers to control uh, data control data that is going in and out of RAM in and out of RAM so we are able to specifically say how many bytes I need for storing this much amount of data let's say I want to store 5 integer uh, uh, 5 integers in RAM so I need 5 into 4 20 uh, bytes of memory I am able to control it at that level and this is very important uh, this gives us the opportunity to learn and take a sneak peek into the uh, what do you say um, into the RAM essentially and understand how it's working underneath and gives in this gives us great control now you can say C also supports dynamic memory allocation we have malloc, calloc and everything I would say yes you are right C also supports dynamic memory allocation but C++ also supports something called object oriented framework it has memory management and it also supports object oriented framework so C is like an upgraded C++ is like an upgraded version of C upgraded it is very similar to C the syntax and all are very similar to C but it is an upgraded version and it supports um, object oriented programming so first reason to choose C++ is dynamic memory second reason is object oriented what is object oriented programming what is object oriented programming so in modern applications right in most of our applications what we'll try to do we'll try to um, uh, mimic the real world entities into the programming world we will we will we'll design applications let's say to store cars and sell cars 
or uh, you can imagine amazon there are so many real world objects that are being sold we'll try to put information about them uh, let's say uh, let's say there is a car and car has so many attributes like color engine type fuel type etc right this is a real world object how do we represent this real world object in the programming world that's where we use objects so we will not get into the detail of all this right now because this is an introductory video but understand that uh, this helps us in data structures and algorithms in a uh, in a very huge way in c there is structural procedural um, framework so there is there are functions and uh, lines of code which gets executed in sequence that is all good uh, but in most applications we will need something much beyond that we will need to represent something in from the real world let's say we're representing some trees and graphs um, uh, which are very good uh, data structures so we will we'll need to make use of such object oriented programming uh, framework so that's why we'll need object oriented programming the remaining languages python java javascript all these also support um, uh, object oriented programming but uh, they take care of dynamic memory allocation uh, by default dynamic memory allocation is taken care by default which means we don't need to worry about them this is very useful to build new new applications real world applications uh, in a fast way without having to worry about dynamic memory allocation but since we are studying data structures and algorithms since we want to become better engineers since we want to write code efficiently and scalable code we will we will need to understand how uh, data is represented internally how what is the best way to represent data what is the best way to access that data and operate on that data that's why we need to have a sneak peek and c++ gives us that opportunity so while learning dsa learn in c++ you can write dsa code in all these programming languages it doesn't matter they will work but since we have the opportunity uh, to learn something new and since we want to learn data structures and algorithms let's try to use something that is very good and it gives us the best possible uh, output right that's why we'll choose c++ for the future videos to learn about data structures and algorithms okay so that's it for this video and from the future videos we'll start with learning c++ as a language we'll try to write some basic code and then we will get into the world of data structures okay thank you so much for watching um, do bookmark this playlist do subscribe to the channel do leave a like do leave a comment okay i will see you in the next one cheers